and for the unintentional sins of the people. By this, the Holy Spirit indicates that the way into holy places is not yet opened as long as the first section is still standing, which is symbolic for the present age. For by this arrangement, gifts and sacrifices are offered that can never perfect the conscience of the worshiper. They deal only with food and drink and various washings and regulations of the body imposed until time of reformation. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through a greater and more perfect tent, one not made by hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered into the holy places, not by the means of the blood of bulls and goats, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of bulls, goats, and ashes of a heifer purifies for the sanctification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from evil works to serve the living God? Therefore, he is the mediator of the new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Since a death has occurred that has redeemed them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. For where a will is involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. For a will takes effect only at death, since it is no longer in force as long as the one who made it is alive. Therefore, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. For when every commandment of the law had been declared by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of bulls and goats with water, scarlet wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled it upon both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant commanded by God for you. And in the same way, he took the blood and sprinkled both the tent and all the vessels used in worship. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins thus it was necessary for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these rites but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these for Christ has entered not into the holy places made by hands which are copies of the true things but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf nor was it to offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters the holy place every year with blood not his own for then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world but as it is he has appeared once for all to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself and just as it is appointed for man to die once and after that comes judgment so Christ who appeared once to bear the sins of many will appear a second time not to deal with sin but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. For since the law has but a shadow of the good things to come, it can never, by the same sacrifices which are continually being offered, perfect those who draw near. For then, would they not have ceased to be offered since the worshipers having once been cleansed would have no further consciousness of sins but in these sacrifices there is a reminder of sin every year for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins consequently when Christ came into the world he said sacrifice and offering you have not desired But a body have you prepared for me. In burnt offering, in sin offering, you have taken no pleasure. Then he adds, behold, 
I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. Above, when he says, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifice and offering and burnt offering and sin offering, for these were offered according to the law. Then he adds, behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And by that will, we have been perfected through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands daily in his service, offering the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand of God, awaiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds and I will write them upon their hearts. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. For where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter into the holy places by the blood of Jesus through the new and living way that he has opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, and let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works, not neglecting to meet as is the habit of some, but exhorting one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. For if we go on sinning deliberately, After receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains any offering for sin, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy upon the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be endured by one who has spurned the Son of God? and outraged the spirit of grace and profaned the blood of the covenant through which he was sanctified. For we remember him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But recall, your former days, when after you were enlightened, you endured a hard struggle through suffering, sometimes being publicly exposed to reproach and affliction, and sometimes being partners with those so treated, for you had compassion on those in prison, and you joyfully accepted the plundering of your property, since you knew you had a better possession and an abiding one. Therefore, Do not throw away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. For yet a little while, and the coming one will come and will not delay, but my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul takes no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls.